Hi everyone and welcome to Take My Money, a brand new preview series where we take a look at Kickstarter games such as this game to my right, as well as retail games and help you decide through our highlights if this game is worth your money. Now, for those who are new to the series, the way the format works is we talk about the overview, how to play around, and then we give you the highlights. Well, I'll stop keeping you guys from looking into this game and let's go into the canals of Venice. Venice is a 1-5 to five player pick up and deliver, point to point movement, economic game where players will be sailing through the canals in order to get valuable resources to complete missions and score valuable victory points. A player's turn is comprised of a series of actions that they must play in order for their turn. To start off, if players have an influence card in their hand, they can choose to play one right now. Here, the red player has an influence card that removes three intrigue, but decides against playing it. So they put it back into their hand and continues on to moving their gondolier. Before moving along the canal, a player must decide either to keep their gondolier on the boat that they are on or move it to the empty boat. If a player wants to keep their gondolier on the same boat, they will pay three coins and begin their movement. If they decide to move the gondolier to the other boat, it is a free action and you're ready to set sail. To move, a player will select a connecting canal and move through it to an adjacent dock. If this is a player's first movement, instead of paying the value, they'll put the first movement token onto the board and move across that canal for free. Once at the new dock, players will declare if they're moving on or mooring at the dock. The red player decides to move on, but before they can move forward, they check to see if they have an assistant on the building. Since they do have an assistant on the top action, they decide to take that action and collect a gray resource. If the assistant was on a further ahead spot on the building, not only can they take the action in which the assistant is on, they can take all other actions that are listed previous on the building. So here with the assistant on level 3, they can take level 3 action, level 2 action, and a level 1 action. All individual actions have to be fully completed or passed over. The player now moves on to the new dock, paying the cost of the canal that they're moving through, and putting it on the board. Again having to declare if they want to move on or moor the dock. If a player is passing through a dock with another boat, a meeting occurs. If it's a boat of an opposing player, each player will discard a scroll card. If they cannot, they'll increase their intrigue value by one, making them more suspicious to the Inquisition. Again, if they have an assistant on the building, they'll perform the actions and then move forward. So here the red player moves on to the next dock, again paying the cost on the canal, and this time decides to moor into the dock. If you're at a location of a mission and have all the resources available, you can turn in that mission. With the red player at the church and them having the church delivery mission, they decide to complete the mission by turning in the resources from the active boat. When completing a mission, you'll immediately get the coin value as well as the victory points. Then you'll put the mission underneath one of the three open spots under the player board. These ongoing effects are active for the remainder of the game or until the mission is archived. Going back to the dock, the player will now advance onto the building. If they do not have an assistant on that building, they'll take one from their supply and put it onto the level 1 spot of the building. They will activate the spot just like we've shown previously and then their turn is over. If the player already has an assistant onto the building, they'll advance it one step forward onto the next level of that building. If the assistant is already on the fourth tier, they will skip the advancement step and activate any actions that they want. Once the activation is done, they'll clean up the money from the board and play goes to the next player. So let's get into the highlight of Venice. Number one, this is a pick up and deliver game with a twist. That's right, the twist is, is it's really an engine building game with pick up and deliver with it. So when you are trying to go and deliver to a certain spot or for a certain mission, the way a typical pick up and deliver game works is you go to one spot, then to the other. Most notably, the recent one that was launched was Star Wars Outer Rims. If you guys have played that, you know what I'm talking about. 
But with this game, you actually set up your assistants on a path that lead up into building up to your missions which is a really good and interesting take because of the fact that you can pick up a mission at, let's say, uh, St. Mark's Square and then be like, well, shoot, I've already built up my engine building uh, to get to that location. So you then on your next turn, pay the extra money to stay on your boat and make the pathway to your destination, spending the additional money for every cost. And it makes it so the game flows a lot faster than a typical pickup and deliver. Number two, indirect player interaction. So with a lot of pick up and deliver games, there's not any player interaction. If there are, it's indirect. And the way that this game works with its indirect player interaction is very intriguing, and that's with the intrigue. So you can strategically place your bridges as well as your boats and make people have to go through them to do their missions. And every time they do, it builds up their intrigue. And when this happens, and if someone ends the game with too much intrigue, guess what? They're eliminated. So you're constantly making strategic placements with your boats, as well as your bridges, to indirectly affect other players. Number three, the assistants. Now, I know I briefly touched on them in point one, but we're going to go back to them and talk a little bit deeper into why they're so important. So these are your engine building sections of this game because the more you go and land onto or dock onto a building with an assistant on it you become more efficient in that building and getting more resources or exchanging resources or even removing intrigue and that is something that you got to be careful on because you're limited to only 10 assistants and so you can't put it on all 15 buildings that are out there so you have to figure out which buildings are most appropriate for you now you can do a strategy where you just land on every building on your first single track around the uh, canals and you'll get your immediate first eight victory points but is it worth it and that's the thing that you have to think about and it becomes a deeper strategy game on where you place those uh, assistance as well as where you want to start upgrading those assistance number four replayability and solo that's right this game is highly replayable because every game is going to be different you have 15 buildings that you put out into the canals and they're going to be different every game that you play plus the missions are going to be different every time you play this game so how you decide you want to fulfill your missions and how you get there and how you inadvertently affect other players is always going to be different between the players that you're playing with and the board game state and not only that if you want to play solo that's right david turchy built the solo mode so you have an advanced ai system that you're working with the doge and smugglers well if you like what you see here and you think venice is worth your money go check it out on kickstarter right now or you can take a look at its facebook page or brain cracks website my name is marco and i'll see you next time